So Kant says, up to now, it has been assumed that all our cognition must conform to the objects. And that's kind of the, the basic assumption that both the uh, Cartesians uh, and the rationalists, as well as the empiricists, uh, had made. Um, but all attempts to find out something about them a priori through concepts that would extend our cognition have on this presuppos presupposition come to nothing. So um, remember, um, metaphysical truths are truths a priori. So matters of uh, cause, substance, space, time, as well as free will and, 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 and not to mention God and the soul, all those things um, uh, we got nowhere. We ran into skeptical problems on the, on the empiricist side or into rationalist um, despotism on the, on the rationalist side if, uh, if we assumed that uh, there's a world out there and our minds come to it sort of after the fact, if you will. Um, hence, let us once try whether we do not get farther with the problems of metaphysics by assuming that the objects must conform to our cognition, which would agree better with the requested possibility of an a priori cognition of them. So he's saying, if you want to explain or a priori cognition, as I can't in my critique of your reason do, then um, you're going to have to let the objects conform to our cognition. Okay, so that's the explanandum, and the thing to be explained. And the objects are supposed to conform to our cognition. What on earth does that mean? Well, Kant says, now he goes, says, let me, let me illustrate that for you. This would be just like, so the just like here suggests it's a similarity, it's an analogy. It's be just like the first thoughts of Copernicus. So the first thoughts being Copernicus's basic idea. Um, who, Copernicus, when he did not make good progress in the explanation of the celestial motions, if he assumed that the entire celestial host revolves around the observer, tried to see if he might not have greater success if he made the observer revolve and, less, and let the stars at rest. So Copernicus did something uh, similar. He got stuck, um, just like philosophy and metaphysics got stuck in one place. And he switched something around. And in that way, he got unstuck. So what did he do? So Copernicus had problems with uh, the explanation of celestial motion. So on geocentrism, Earth is in the center. The, the sun and I'm going to make the sun unhappy because Earth is in the center. So the sun, the moon, and the stars revolve around it. Copernicus on this geocentric model couldn't explain celestial motion. So what he was what we actually observed uh, was happening up in the sky couldn't be captured on this picture. So what did he do? He tried to see if he might not have greater success if he made the observer revolve and that the stars at rest. So the star in this case, our star is the sun. So this is the old paradigm. So what Copernicus did, he put the star, our star, the sun, in the center, then made the observer revolve around it. So now Earth is out here orbiting the sun, Earth, and, you know, a bunch of other things as well, like, I don't know, Saturn. That's how you make progress in the explanation of celestial motion. Okay, so now we have a new paradigm. Kant 
says, now, in metaphysics, we can try in a similar way regarding the intuition of objects. If intuition was to conform to the constitution of the objects, then I do not see how we can know anything of them a priori. So, here's uh, our object, just a chair. If my intuition and in general Kant uh, will say, so he begins by talking about intuition, but he really means uh, cognition, or generally cognition. Um, if my cognition of the object has to conform to the constitution of the object, then I do not see how we can know anything of them a priori. So in that picture, which is basically the picture that Descartes and, and the empiricists, the rationalists and the empiricists espoused, uh, we're not explaining, we're not going to get make any progress in metaphysics. So, you know, the, the analogy would be, so here, sort of, sort of speak, the cognition, our cognition revolves around the objects. The objects are in the center, they're out there in the real world. Uh, we come to them after the fact. But if now, that's the old paradigm, if now the object, the object as an object of the senses conforms to the constitution of our faculty of intuition, then I can very well represent this possibility to myself. So Kant is saying, uh, if my intuition and more generally my cognition of the object or if the object conforms to my cognition to my intuition and cognition, the constitution of my intuition and cognition, then I can uh, understand and then I can make progress in metaphysics. So now we have, if you will, by analogy, the objects revolving around our cognition. Now, and that's Kant's explanation. So, Let's take a brief look. The thing to be explained is the move from uh, an epistemology and metaphysics in which intuition and cognition conforms to the constitution of objects to a, uh, an epistemology and metaphysics in which the object conforms to the constitution of my intuition, my cognition. Weird, Kant says, that move can helpfully be illustrated by Copernicus's move. So um, this does not yet explain in great detail what this picture is, but there's a couple of things now, uh, now that we know from uh, our prior uh, discussion, what an explanance and an explanandum is, now we can make sense of this.